Hey y'all, Patton with Wild Texas Outdoors here. I'm here with Jess Pryles, AKA Hardcore Carnivore, as you may know her. And we're down here in South Texas doing some late season whitetail call hunts. And we're about to cook up some elk backstrap that I shot earlier this season. Mm -hmm. If you haven't watched that video, make sure you go back on our channel, like and subscribe whenever you watch it so you don't want to miss out. And we're going to do it caveman style, which is mm -hmm. going to be a first for me. Jess is a big time expert on it and looking forward to learning the ropes. Okay, you go grab the meat, and while you do that, we have a great fire pit in front of us, and I know you mentioned to me that this is what you wanted to learn, right? Because you've cooked this a bunch of ways, but this is actually the perfect shape, too, right. to do this style of cooking. And caveman is basically when you cook directly onto coals themselves. Um, so, do you, anything, when did you get this elk? Yeah, so like, this elk is from just a couple months ago, actually December 8th, not that I've memorized the date or anything like that, but you've seen some of our other videos. We've cooked this in cast iron. We've done some shanks in the crock pot, and we've always talked about doing a piece of meat caveman style. So this is going to be a lot of fun to learn. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go grab some seasoning. The first thing we got to do is season it up. We're going to cheat it a little bit here, okay? The idea what is, I think, so first of all, for a, a piece of meat like this that's an elk backstrap, it's yep. a premium piece of meat. So we can afford to do it a little rarer to medium rare, and that's when this cooking style really comes into its own. But to give us a little head start, we're gonna use my seasoning, Hardcore Carnivore Black. So this is the seasoning, Hardcore Carnivore Black, um, and this is made with activated charcoal. I know y'all are a big fan. Uh, y'all being the whole Wild Texas Outdoors crew, yeah, not just Patton. This is by far our favorite seasoning of the Hardcore. They're all good, the red, Amplify, Michelada, Camo, but the black is by far top of the list for us. So this will not only season our meat, which is crucially important, um, but it's gonna give us a nice crust to start with. So we're gonna go in and season. I'm gonna have you flip. Gracias. This is real teamwork. Oh yeah, teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> okay, so we're well seasoned on all sides, and now we're going to our coals. So just quickly on our coals, what you wanna make sure is that you have a generous coal bed that's at least double the size of the meat itself. And we'll go into why, because this is the okay. biggest mistake that everyone makes. Gotcha. Um, so our coals are nice and hot, they're glowing red, and literally, we're gonna go straight on. So let me give them a quick poke with the tongs just to make sure they're running at max heat Whole output. That's right, and then we're going on. All right. So the number one mistake that people make when they're doing this caveman style direct charcoal cooking is they don't leave enough room to flip. So a lot of people will pick up their piece of meat and then put it right back on the area that it was. Now, if you've ever built a campfire, and I know you have. Uh, One or two. <laughs> so oxygen is what gives fire its breath, is what gives it its heat. And when we put the meat on directly, we're immediately lowering the temperature of those coals gotcha. and smothering it. So if we were to flip it onto the same spot, you'd get a really half-assed sear, yeah, basically. Yeah, you use up kind of the, the life of those coals for that area. Definitely. So what we're gonna do once we leave this on for a little bit, and you can see that it started to cook immediately. Already. Yeah, you can see on the on the sides there. Um, and we're gonna flip it onto a fresh bed of coals okay. when we do flip. So that's a big, if you were gonna be cooking a lot of meat caveman style, you need a lot of coals. It's That's a hard one to do. And you know, it's one of those things where it's not bad for you, it's fun, it's yeah. a little different, uh, it's slightly gimmicky, but I think there also rings true that if you're truly, truly camping and you don't have a grate out there or a grill out there, you can absolutely cook it this way. Skewer it with sticks, throw it on the coals. I mean, two easy options for if you are camping, right? I actually thought, I don't know if you've ever had weird thoughts like this, but you know, like taking a <laughs> white tail rack and just like putting kebabs on it right. into the fire. Right. It's nature's kebabs. Yeah. Using Have you? The, using the antler. No, never done that. But, that but now cool. you're going yeah, to? Now you're like, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> this is the next video. Stay tuned. <laughs> About the, how long do you go on each side? Are you going mainly off a look, uh, size of the meat, kind of a combination of all of it, or what? how long do you want to sit right there? So the important part about this is it was pretty uniform thickness the whole way through, right. and that's going to matter a lot to this cooking style. Right. Now, 
with this cooking style as well, because there's such great heat on one side, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be a little gray around the edges, but pink in the sure. middle, which is different from that reverse sear style that we sometimes do, where you get it perfectly pink. Right. Um, but again, it's just style of cooking. Caveman style. So I'm just going to let it go a couple minutes, and you can see that color creeping in on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, I'd probably go about uh, four to six minutes per okay. side for a piece like this. Uh, and then the most important part is actually going to be to let it rest. So once yeah. we take it off the heat, we're going to put it on a board, cover it loosely with foil because basically the muscle fibers have been under trauma. Mm -hmm. So they squeeze up and squeeze all of the water and of course meat is 70% water out, of, out to the very edges. And so when you let it rest, you're going to let them unfurl and all the water comes back to where it was. Yeah, it doesn't go back like on a cellular level, but basically sure. as it untwists, it creates gaps in between the fibers mm -hmm. where it can go back. And that's the difference okay. between, have you ever cut a steak like straight away and just seen juices it, go everywhere? It just bleeds all over the place for lack mm -hmm. of a better term. Right, and so the difference is when you rest it, you can really expect to see so, so much less loss and that okay, means a cool. juicier steak. Good to know. All right, I feel like we're ready to flip. Probably about that time. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna pull it from the front and just pull it to the back. So basically what you just did right there is just rolled it over. Yeah, the one thing that I did correct on it, as I rolled it over, it rolled onto a really big lump of charcoal, and that means that there was direct contact on that lump and then a big gap. Okay. So I just tried to nestle it so that it's getting... Uniform heat everywhere. Yeah, because it's not only about heat that's going to directly, directly affect the crust that you're going right. to get to. But, I mean, does it look like you think it would look? Like you expected? It's starting to turn into a real sexy piece of steak, that's for sure. <laughs> but I would have thought there would have been um, more ash on it almost. You know, I mean, you can see a little bit of that white ash, but there's really not a, maybe give it a flick on one spot and mm -hmm. you're good to go. And it had a lot to do with the coals that we started with. So we started with really nice, clean coals. You can see the fire like has more of that ashy coal around the edges. Right. Um, but yeah, obviously if we put them onto the edge, you definitely get that yeah. kind of white powder. It almost, that, those coals are, so nice that they almost look like they're straight out of a charcoal bag. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's been resting for a good 10 plus minutes. About so. So let's see what we got here. Ooh. Looks good. It does look good. We got a great crust, both from obviously that direct charcoal cooking and. And the black. Uh, so now is the moment of truth. So what you wanna, it's a little harder to do, but you wanna try and find the grain. And the way to do that is to pull it apart gently. So can you see which way the grain is running? Right, and you can almost even see on the side how it's coming up, which way it goes. Yeah, so it's running here. And that means that we're gonna cut against the grain because that's gonna actually change how tender it is for us to eat too. Here we go, let's, wish me luck. Let's see, <sighs> how do we do? So just like we talked about, we expected it to be pretty rare in the middle still because we had that right. super direct heat, but that's still a beautiful cook on oh, a beautiful yeah. piece of meat, I think. Ideally for wild game, you want to lean on the side of more rare than not. Well, for yeah, for something like this where Definitely the back strap so. is, you know, so cream delicious. Cream. All right, let's do it. Okay. Let's try out. Cheers. Oh, that's perfect. And you're right, when you cut across the grain like that, I mean, you can pull it apart with your front teeth. Mm -hmm. nice it makes a big easy. difference. 